not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and self-ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot ob obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When, uh, it's a little late on my homework this week. Any of y'all ever get a little late on your homework? Uh, Johnny emailed me on Tuesday, I think, and said, have you got a, a title for your sermon? And so I said, well, I'll get one to you real quick. And so I went to my de facto commentary, uh, the New Interpreter's commentary, and found that the theologian who was writing on this was one of my favorite theologians, Luke Timothy Johnson. And I went to the passage that we were talking about today and, and uh, Luke Timothy Johnson said that this passage is intensely sermonic. I was like, oh my, not another sermon. <laughs> so as uh, I began preparing and getting ready for that, for some reason, I don't know why, I, my mind started wondering uh, and then it was wondering, it was wandering, and it wandered years back to a friend I had named Kokomo. Kokomo and his family grew up in Westwood Gardens. You know, Walter, you know where Westwood Gardens is? It's over by the sand ditch, and I grew up with Kokomo, and, and uh, by the sand ditch there were various parts of motorcycles always there. I think Kokomo started riding a Harley when he was in the third grade. And, so I would, Kokomo, you would always ask them, uh, there was Miss Kokomo and, and Mr. Kokomo, and it seems like whatever you asked them, uh, uh, Miss Kokomo, is it hard if Kokomo goes over and does a science project with me, she would always go, and they would all point at you with their little finger. Can't dance, too wet to plow, it's too windy to stack BBs. Then you'd say, well, Mr. Kokomo, is it okay if we go down in the sand? Did you got a, some coffee cans where we can catch lizards? And Mr. Kokomo would look at you and shake his little finger. He said, well, we can't dance. It's too wet to plow. It's too windy to stack BBs. I always think there is some sort of message in that. And so years later when I was again late on a sermon and I was appointed to... Uh, a church in Crockett County, two churches called Friendship and Elizabeth. And I was also still doing gigs, you know, on weekends to try to pay the bills. And so I should have kind of, flag should have gone up when I saw that this gig was on, uh, on 45 South, number one, and two, that it was uh, from 10 till 2 in the morning. But you know, I need, I said, okay. So I went and was doing the gig. It was a biker bar. And uh, at, during the breaks of, of my uh, gigging, I would go out and work on my sermon. And a couple, you know, so, why you, you, you know, being a good shepherd of my time. And so one of the last times that I went out there, lo and behold, someone came up to where I was writing it, and it was Kokomo. He said, you done gone from rock and roll into the church? I said, yeah, I said, I have. As a matter of fact, um, why don't you and your friends come tomorrow to our church in friendship, it's right by the bank, bring your friends, you know, and, and as a matter of fact, 
there are, both churches are coming together like they do every year, and they're going to have a big, big spread, you know, and, and uh, come, and, you know, I'll be preaching, and, and then you can have a chicken and pie. He looked at me and goes, you ain't going to preach at me, are you? I said, well, yeah, I will, but, you know, it's okay. Come on, bring your friends. And he goes, chicken and pie? I said, yeah, chicken and pie. So the next day, there, right when the service was starting and the anthem was played, you could hear Harley Davidson's coming and circling around the church, several of them. They circled and they circled, and then the next thing you heard, they drove away. And then Leon, of course, looked up and said, must be friends of yours, preacher. <laughs> you know, in a way, things can kind of be boiled down to, are you going to really, really dig into the repentance into what James really, when you go back and look at this, is saying it's all about these cravings. It's all about the logic of envy. In a, in a, in a, in a real way, those things are uncomfortable. We don't want to look at them. Like Kokomo, we don't want people to preach at us and point their little fingers at us. We all want to kind of think about chicken and pie. As a matter of fact, when reality presses, we default to what is our existential chicken and pie. And we all do it. It's what James is talking about when he means repentance is actually what they call metanoia, which is really just a changing of your mind changing of the things that are constantly cycling in our mind. When, we put, when, the, when the needle goes down on the vinyl, it circles around, and it goes and it goes until some sort of way we can lift that needle up and change our mind and start thinking uh, thoughts that deal rather than with this phenomenon of craving, but with the ph phenomenon of God's grace. That's what James really means when he says, submit yourself to God. So James, this is really, it's really about repentance, a call to constant conversion, constant conversion. In a way, we're all like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. We start out black and white, on M, Uncle Henry, right? The picture's in black and white. You're saved by works or by faith. Things are good, things are bad, things are left, things are right, things are up, things are down, things are dark, things are light. But like Dorothy, when we all find ourselves in the storm, that's when, just like in the Wizard of Oz, things turn colorful. Things go from monochromatic to polychromatic. Dr. Richardson, that's when sort of, I guess, in the art world, things become in perspective. Perspective starts coming in art, and it kind of freaked people it out first, didn't it, when art started showing perspective. It freaks us out, too. It's too much. We want chicken and pie. Chicken and pie. But when we're in the storm, and when there are scarecrows, and when there are cowardly lions and tin men, when there are flying monkeys, when good is bad and bad is good, sometimes even in the church, sometimes even at home, that's when we even sometimes get a peek around the curtain and see that even the person moving the dials is in his own life, trying in his own way or her own way to either to submit to God 
our default to chicken and pie, chicken and pie. You can't dance, it's too wet to plow, it's too windy to stack BBs, chicken and pie. When reality presses, we all default to chicken and pie. The existential equivalences of this are what we meet in our daily lives. Are we going to submit to God? Are we going to resist the devil? Are we going to draw near to God? Are we going to harvest righteousness that is sown in peace? Or are we going to let that needle continue to play in those toxicities and those things that constantly go around. The flying monkeys. This isn't a rhetorical question. What do we do? We submit. We repent. We change our minds. John the Baptist, the forerunner, what's the first thing he said? He said, repent. Why? Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. And it's not here, it's not there. It is among you right now right now change your mind when Jesus' first words what did he say he said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand you can't dance it's too wet to plow. It's too windy to stack BBs. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.